Welcome to the Madhouse! <laughs> We all go a little mad sometimes. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video by yours truly, the Knights of War. We've been grinding all week in preparation for haunt season, and uh, we just hit 500 subscribers, so we couldn't be more thankful for that. We're already almost to 600 subscribers, so thank you so much for that. But today's video, we're going to talk a little bit of HHN. Um, we're going to give you the game plan of what I typically like to do um, when I go to the event as far as prioritizing my time at the event because I only know we only get like about seven or eight hours at the event and if you want to hit everything I suggest you follow this game plan unless you have something another system that works um, feel free to I'm gonna break down the ticket options too so if you're going one time that way you have different options to decide of what ticket you want to get and stuff like that so first and foremost we'll break down the ticket options of course you got your general admission ticket which gets you into the event and you have to wait all the regular lines uh, and everything and then of course you got the next step up which is your uh, express pass which gets you a one-time front of the line to all uh, attractions and mazes at the event and priority seating at the shows then you've got of course your uh, RIP tour which is like the VIP I, I guess and that comes with, of course, a free or a before the event buffet where you get to enjoy and sit down and, and have the buffet option and stuff like that. And of course, uh, you get front, uh, limited front of line all night, which uh, if you guys want to take advantage of that, definitely something you should look into. I've been wanting to do it, it's just a little pricey, so that's why I haven't done it. And then, of course, you have your uh, frequent fear passes if you're going multiple nights, um, ultimate frequent fear passes and stuff like that. Uh, if you're going multiple nights, I suggest you buy a frequent fear pass. They save you a ton of money on uh, general admission tickets, so definitely take advantage of the frequent fear pass. Now, in order for you to cover the event, if you're just going on a one night general admission, here's the game plan of what to do. And this goes for anyone who wants to just do this game plan, whether you're doing express or not. Uh, however you want to tackle the mazes and scare zones and uh, shows, and if we're, you want to go on rides, rides as well. But this is mostly just for the mazes and to kind of get through everything in the night. What I suggest you do is you get to the event early. Now you want to get there at least uh, a couple hours before the event starts. That way you can get something to eat in the city walk because it's a lot cheaper to eat in the city walk or off site uh, than actually eating inside the park. It's a little bit pricey inside the park, so you want to, of course, uh, eat outside of the park. So get uh, to Universal City around a couple hours before the event starts, that way you have an idea and um, you're on time and you get to get something to eat in your stomach for the night, that way you don't go into the event empty stomach. From there, go through your security check. I would definitely take advantage of the early entry they do every year at the event, which starts around 5 p.m. Uh, and that gets you through the first three mazes in the metro sets and I believe Stranger Things and Killer Files from Outer Space. So that's five mazes you can tackle uh, with the early entry. Definitely head down to the metro sets first though. The three mazes in the back lot which will be Creep Show, uh, Universal Monsters, Frank Meets the Wolfman, and Ghostbusters. Definitely you're going to want to hit those. Uh, and do them in the order that they uh, are actually. What I would do is, usually what I do is um, go from Ghostbusters back because everyone's going to hit Creep Show since it's the first maze that you're going to hit once you get out of the scare zone. So I have hit up uh, Ghostbusters, then Universal Monsters, and then um, hit up, of course, uh, Creepshow, and yeah, you should have those three mazes tackled on top of all Hollow people scare zone. Then head back to the lower lot. Of course, you're going to want to go to Stranger Things because I can guarantee you the wait time for that every night is going to be insanely crowded. We're talking about a three hour wait at most, so try to hit that as early as possible. Even if you want to hit that before you hit the lower lot mazes, I would suggest it because it's going to be probably the most packed maze of the night. From there, hit Killer Clowns from Outer Space because it's going to be right there. And then that's all the mazes done on the bottom. That's five mazes already done. So all you have to do is worry about when you go upstairs to the last four mazes that they have. If you want to count Walking Dead 5, never gone through it, but I don't suggest you go through it. 
uh, at the event only because it's there year round. So if you want to visit Universal Studios by yourself or on a, just a regular day, you can go through the Walking Dead maze. It's the same thing. Really. They only add like a couple more zombies. Uh, from there, I would head straight to the uh, studio tour area where you're going to have us and the Curse of Pandora's box. That's two more mazes. By this point, the event should be officially open, so crowds should start coming in. Lines shouldn't be too bad at this point, but uh, it all just varies on the night you go. From there, it's going to get a little bit later on in the night. It's going to be about maybe, if you do everything, probably about 8.30 anywhere from 8.30 to 9.30, that's when the event's gonna start getting really packed and your last two mazes are gonna be probably your worst uh, wait times for the rest of the night. We're talking uh, Holidays in Hell and House of a Thousand Corpses only because those are gonna be the first two mazes that people see when they walk in and they're gonna probably be the first two mazes people go through. So you're gonna look about maybe an hour or two wait on both of those, maybe, depending. House of a Thousand Corpses, maybe not, only because uh, I know a lot of people are not really looking forward to that one, so you might luck out on those. Um, but definitely that will, those will be your last two mazes you hit. On top of that, you'll be hitting the rest of the scare zones on the way out. Now if you want to get there early and enjoy opening ceremony, I suggest you take advantage of the early entry because they do have a separate line just for the opening ceremony. And a lot of people who uh, do early entry take advantage of that line uh, and it gets you a good front row view of it. So. That's basically my game plan for HHN 2019. Uh, I've been doing this game plan for quite some time now and it's worked out since they've started the early entry program. And I think it's just an amazing uh, amazing thing to do for the um, event just because it gets you, make sure, it pretty much guarantees you to do everything maze-wise at least and stuff like that. So thanks guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoy HHN 2019. Uh, if you guys see us at the event, we'll be there. Come say hi, take a picture, hang out with us. We're all for you guys. So thanks guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.